perceived you to be as a, as a general manager? Yeah, no, great thing to ask. I, uh, because we had talked about it in the summer when Jake was the GM, you knew it was going to happen. You know, Roy had asked about him you know, being, being traded, if he can get moved. So we just looked at it like this is going to happen one way or the other. Either we trade him or we keep him and he leaves. But one way or the other, he will not be with the Toronto Blue Jays after that year. So I won't say it was easy, but it was easy in the sense that we knew what the alternatives were. So I try to, you know, with something like that, really anything, you try to be as objective as you can. If I want to get sentimental, and he's a great player, and he is, he's a great human being, and all the years and everything he's done for the organization, you might get tainted, and it may um, <coughs> throw you off, off course a little bit. But it all came down to what are your alternatives? And I think with any decision that we make, what are the alternatives? So option A, keep the player, pay his salary, have hopefully a great year with him, hopefully he wins a Cy Young, know he's going to leave and get two draft picks, or what's the alternative of what you can acquire in trade? knowing full well that he's not coming back. So every trade talk we had, all the dialogue, whatever we, all we had to do was compare the package or the return to what, what, <clears throat> what obviously the option was to keep the player and get the draft picks. So I had tunnel vision at the time. We had so many things going on. We changed scouting, we changed development. Uh, I know it was a story, but I thought the fact that I was able to somewhat keep it quiet made it easier for me to deal with it. And um, I didn't get, I didn't feel like, you know, I just got the job, and I wasn't thinking about, wow, I'm going to get fired. Um, but I, I know it happens in sports, and I've always told myself that, and I hope it never comes to this point for me. I say it now, and who knows, you hope you don't get to that point, but I know it happens in sports where, you know, you see transactions made and so on, you think, well, GM's on his last legs or wants to save his job and does this and that. I'm a firm believer if you start to think that way, at the end of the day, whether you're out of the job or not, you're probably on thin ice. And whatever transaction you, you make, maybe it extends your shelf life a year or two. If you made a bad move, it'll show up three or four years from now. If you get fired anyways, it'll show up three or four years from now. So if you make the right move, at a minimum, you should feel like when you walk away from the job, because I'm not going to be doing this forever, it's just reality of sports, I can look back and say I, the re reasons behind every transaction were not <laughs> self-motivated for my career and my job and things like that. Because my responsibility, I know it's very cliche to say it is to the Toronto Blue Jays, is to, is to the city, is to Canada. I'm a big sports fan, you know, whether it was Jays or whatnot. I want to know that my GM is not worried about his job. He's worried about doing what, what's right. And part of it is being here. You're going to be in the media. You're going to get slammed and so on. And that's part of the gig, reality of it. So I just want to know that they're doing things for the right reasons because every fan they're not the ones on the phone. They can't make trades. I know they're, they're dying to. And make, why don't we go get this guy? Why don't we go get that that guy? As a fan, I just want to know that my GM, that I say mine because you feel like it's your team, and it is, is doing everything he can. He's going to put in the hours. He's going to work hard. <coughs> he's doing everything for the right reasons. And